The value-priced Siskiyou T-Series from Polygon has been a game-changer for many people. A highly capable and fun series of trail bikes, they are Polygon's best-selling model. And for good reason. They are highly capable and fun mid-travel trail mountain bikes with good specs. And most importantly, they're affordable. In this box is the new Polygon Siskiyou T6. It's the lowest cost model in the T-Series with an MSRP of $1,699 and it's currently on sale for $1,299. Yes, you heard me right, $1,299. That's unheard of for a mid-travel trail bike. Hell, it's hard to find a good hardtail for that price. For many new mountain bikers looking to dip their toes in this sport, the T6 just might be the ticket. But is it a capable bike for the money? Let's get it assembled and put it to the test. And for this test, we're going to do something different. For the first ride on this bike, I thought it would be best to take it somewhere completely unfamiliar. And what better place to take this entry-level trail bike than Sedona, Arizona? The mark of a good trail bike is to be able to do everything reasonably well. It needs to climb well. It needs to descend well. And it needs to inspire confidence on a variety of terrain, especially with newer riders just getting into mountain biking. This place is as unfamiliar a territory as it gets for me, so let's take this bike on the trails and see how it rides. Before we get into the ride impressions, Let's talk about the specs of the bike. The frame on the T6 is the same frame you'll find on the more expensive T7, T8, and T9 models. All capable trail smashers. The frame specs are all modern. You have a boost rear through axle. This is something that gets skimped on with other bikes in this price range. I'm happy to see this here. A tapered head tube, which is fast becoming more common on budget bikes. You get ISCG tabs which allow you to run a bash guard and a chain guide. They're located right here behind the chain ring. Internal cable routing gives you a nice clean look and there's room for a decent sized water bottle. This bike is a size medium 29er. It's also available in a size medium 27.5 version. The small frames are designed around 27.5 inch wheels. The large and the extra large are designed around 29 inch wheels. The suspension is a linkage-driven single pivot design. What does that mean exactly? Well, it could mean anything, depending on the bike. But in the case of the Siskiyou, we should have a capable descender. But that may be at the cost of some climbing ability. But we'll see. There's a lot of climbing in Sedona. Okay, here we go. This is where we see how low we can go on the specs. First off, let's start with the suspension components. Up front we have a Boost RockShox Recon RL with 140 millimeters of travel. This is one of the cheaper forks in the RockShox lineup, but it's a workhorse of a fork. It features rebound and compression adjustment. Compression adjustment is courtesy of the tried and true motion control damper. The stanchions are 32 millimeters, which you'd expect to be flimsy for a trail bike like this, but the fork actually feels pretty good. That might be because the stanchions on this fork are actually made of steel. However, as a result, the fork is also heavy. I ran 20% sag in the fork, and on the ride it felt supportive and surprisingly supple. I didn't experience any unnerving dives, even when landing nose heavy off of drops like this. Rear shock is courtesy of X-Fusion. It's the O2 Pro R. The R signifies that the shock has a rebound adjustment. I chose to run 25% sag in the rear. That's a little less sag than what's recommended, but I wanted to reduce the number of pedal strikes on the technical climbs here in Sedona. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I'm actually surprised they made it up that far. There are no compression or lockout knobs on the shock. Just set the sag and the rebound and go ride. X-Fusion makes some good value parts 
of good quality, and this one looks pretty well made. The drivetrain is courtesy of Shimano. We have a 10-speed Dior setup, and we have a genuine Shimano Dior cassette with an 11 to 42 tooth range. The derailleur has a clutch, which means drop chains are not an issue. Every part is Shimano with the exception of the chain, which is from KMC. A 42 tooth Max cassette is a little on the conservative side in this day and age. Having this gear range isn't a deal breaker, but that will depend on where you ride most. The set on the T6 is a combination of Shimano 400 series center lock hubs laced to unbranded rims. The rim has a 35mm internal width and they come pre-taped to run tubeless. Now wide rims are great for running bigger volume tires. And the tires on this bike are the V-Snap WCE Mark II in 29 by 25 They are also tubeless ready. I'm glad to see this. All you need is some tubeless valves and some sealant and you're good to go. I'm really happy to see this on a lower priced polygon. Honestly, this should be a standard on all mountain bikes as far as I'm concerned. The stopping power comes from the Shimano MT201 brakes. The T6 also comes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. I have a lot of experience with the MT201. They're a reliable and inexpensive two-piston brake set. During my time in Sedona, I found the power to be acceptable. Right. They also modulated well. I would prefer a more powerful four-piston brake set on a bike like this. I didn't have any issues with the stock brakes, but I prefer more stopping power for high-speed downhills. Right. We'll put them to the test in some higher-speed situations over the next few months. The bars, stem, and grips are from Polygon's house brand Entity. The grips have a nice mushroom waffle pattern similar to DMR death grips. The saddle is not from Entity. It's a WTV Volt saddle, which is one of my favorite saddles. And that saddle is bolted to a 150mm Transex dropper post. How do all these parts work together? The geometry of the T6 is what you consider modern. And that was noticeable on the trails. The cliche goes long, low, and slack. The ergonomics of the bike were fine for my 5'9 height. There was plenty of room to move in and around the bike, which is key to good bike control. The 65 degree head angle, the very modern 460 millimeters of reach, and low bottom bracket height gives the T6 a stable in the bike feel. The chainstay is shorter at 430 millimeters, which adds <laughs> yeah. a bit of playfulness. But it's not so short as to make the bike feel squirrely. I was actually surprised to find this bike to be very balanced. I didn't experience serious wallowing on steep climbs. If you're not aware what wallowing is, that's when the front wheel starts to come up off the ground when you're climbing a steep uphill. This will force you to shift your weight to the front wheel, which then could result in your back wheel slipping. I didn't experience that on the T6, and it didn't feel sketchy at all on slow tech going down. The effective seat angle is a steep 76.5 degrees, and I felt pretty centered on seated climbs. Reach numbers I would consider to be pretty long at 460 millimeters for the size medium 29er. I love the short seat tube on this bike. It allows for longer travel droppers to really get the seat low and out of the way on steep technical descents. Sedona is a very technical and physically demanding place. Really it's an ideal place to use a trail bike like the T6. Over bumps and chatter, the T6 felt smooth and controlled. I was surprised at how well the suspension components absorbed them. The bike tracked well navigating across rock gardens, and the shock performed admirably. The suspension ramps up quickly, and I didn't experience any bottom outs coming off drops. On smoother sections going downhill, the bike felt responsive and snappy. As a hardcore 27.5 rider, I appreciate the T6's ability to pop off random hits along the trail. Pull a little faster. 
Oh, steps, steps. <laughs> Maneuverability in tight areas was also very good. Climbing ability was good. Not great, but good. And I'll get into why shortly. The bike maintained traction really well on steep, techy climbs. Okay, cool. Something I attribute to the one. sticky tires yeah. and the Come supple on. suspension. Yeah, did it. That looks fun going down. One thing I noticed is how sluggish the T6 can be on flat terrain. I found myself using the bigger gears on the cassette a lot. Some of it had to do with the technical nature of the terrain, as well as being at a slightly higher altitude than I'm accustomed to. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> but mostly, I think it's due to the tires. The V-Snap tires are some of the most aggressive tires I've ever ridden. Looking at V's website, it's clear that these tires are designed for serious downhilling. They have thick casings and very slow rebounding rubber. Before I left, I weighed these tires at 1,270 grams each. That's heavy. And all weight aside, you still get a ton of drag that comes with very soft, sticky rubber. Despite the weight, those tires had an insane amount of grip. If you prioritize grip over rolling speed, these tires might be for you. Overall, the bike is heavy, but not excessively heavy for a bike in this category. I weighed the T6 at a little over 36 pounds. There are two main culprits contributing to the weight. The first is the heavy Recon 4. The second is the V-tires. I was able to save a pound of weight by going tubeless. And I could save another pound to pound and a half by running less aggressive trail tires. That change alone would bring the weight in line with many modern aluminum framed 29er trail bikes. And in my experience, that would change the pedaling performance dramatically and would sacrifice little in the way of grip. Despite the weight, the bike handles amazingly well. After leaving Sedona, I went and rode in the Sonoran Desert outside of Scottsdale, where I found some fun rock slabs and more technical features to play on. Again here, I found the bike to be very balanced. Despite the fact that this bike has a relatively low bottom bracket, I was able to work through these technical sections without issue. this bike for? This bike is for someone who's on a budget or just getting into the sport. Or even maybe a hardtail rider switching over to full suspension for the first time. I think in this case you'll find a lot of value here and a bike that will not leave you wanting for more. This bike is also a fantastic choice for someone just getting into mountain biking and is reluctant to go the hardtail route. The bike has plenty of capability and should be more than enough bike for anyone just getting into mountain biking. Also, I think this is a fantastic bike for someone who likes to do upgrades. The Siskiyou T-Series is a solid and proven platform to build off of. Polygon is one of the few companies that actually makes their frames. They also make a few frames for other brands that you know and love. This complete bike costs less than most full suspension frame sets and performs on par with many of the top brands. So for someone like me, this is ideal because there's an abundance of heavily discounted aftermarket parts available right now. This bike is not for someone who has long fire road climbs up to the top with long fast descents. I think you'll be best served by going with something like the T7, the T8, or the T9. Those bikes will give you a wider range of gearing, more powerful brakes, and overall higher end components. I wouldn't sleep on this bike, especially at the current sale price. I can nitpick components or weight, but this bike rides as good as bikes costing more than double. In fact, I decided to test this bike up against a bike costing four times as much. So please like, subscribe, and share if you want to see more. We'll have this bike for a little while before we have to send it back. We've got some riding, testing, and upgrading to do. Also on this trip, we celebrated the origin story of this journey. If you like a good origin story, stick around for that. I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Thanks for watching.